Hello there, students. Welcome to another Chem Complete Lecture. And today, I am going to be addressing a situation that comes up when we are handling chromatography, especially in gas chromatography, and that is how to account for the response factor when various compounds are reaching your detector. So that's all coming up right now. All right, everybody, before I get started here, if you could just drop a like for the YouTube algorithm, and if you comment, I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and get started with today's lecture. So this is actually an overdue lecture. I really wanted to do this quite some time ago. However, I haven't had a chance to update this. This actually came out of some comments from this video that I did a while back. This is one of the more popular videos on my channel, which is how to analyze gas chromatography results for a lab. Now, the context of this particular lecture was dealing with an introduction to gas chromatography lab. So usually this is done in general chemistry or in organic chemistry. It's a lot of times if you're dealing with uh, like dehydration of alcohols into alkenes, you'll get a mixture of a couple, you know, cis trans isomers, and then you'll run it through here and you'll get the various results. Most of the time instructors, and I'm making a generalization here, do not require students at that first level to utilize or talk about response factors. Obviously that can vary. Response factors become important and do need to be considered when you are looking at different detector responses and you're either in a higher level class, so you're starting to take a look at something like an instrumental uh, chemistry class, usually a third year class or fourth year class, and then obviously if you are working in industry and you are running regular reports response factor is something that's very important to consider so i wanted to take some time to talk about that today and you can see if you come down here uh some of the comments uh this one right here from jude thank you uh to use this simplistic method you must make it clear that you have assumed and confirmed that the three components have similar if not even the same response factors for the particular detector that's being used. And that is a true statement. Uh, you can see I acknowledge that here and I give a response saying this was originally meant to be a simpler uh, lab uh, rundown. So for those of you that are interested in this, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. How do you account for response factor, okay? So when we start talking about this, one of the things that you need to account for if you're going to try to look between different compounds within one GC run, or if you're trying to compare one compound to itself in a different GC run, meaning you've, you're going through and you're running the setup again, is that you need to start dealing with response factor. So response factor is going to account for the fact that the detector is going to uh, read or detect the components uh, to a different degree, right? So we usually have some sort of voltage or something like that. And in differences of thermal conductivity, you've got a carrier gas, and then all of a sudden one of the components shows a difference in that. And when the meter detects that, that's where you're getting your peak that comes out, right? And we always assess area under the peak. So if you had watched that original uh, video, you've seen where what we're talking about here, okay? So what we really want to do is in this case we want to take concentration okay so I'm going to use molarity in my examples here and we want to kind of tie it to or correlate it to the detector response now the detector response is going to be that area okay um, relative to the retention time that we're looking at so remember that 
back in that original lecture, we kind of just talked about the boiling point and that things with the lower boiling points, right, they're going to come off first. And then we were looking at the various areas and the percentages to talk about the uh, composition, right, or the concentrations of the original mixture that was put in there. So now what we want to do is really account for, okay, uh, given that we could potentially have different injection volumes, given that the day-to-day uh, -day variance or error could be drifting, we want to have some way to account for that, and that is where we get into talking about using a response factor. So there's two things that I want to set up here first for you to consider. And the first one is what we refer to as an internal standard. So an internal standard is going to be some component. A lot of times it's relevant to whatever sort of uh, compounds you're trying to run through the actual GC itself. It doesn't necessarily have to be. OK, but your internal standard is going to be a separate com chemical compound that you are going to use to basically run checks um, or standardize the GC. Uh, and this is where we're going to derive our response factor from. OK, and then the second thing is we're going to take a look at some compound or analyte of interest. Right. So maybe there's a whole bunch of them in a mixture, but we're going to identify one. And for right now, we'll just call this compound X. And these are the two things that we're going to start looking at. So the goal here is that we want to tie the internal standard and its uh, area to that of compound X. And we're going to need their concentrations to do this as well, right? So your internal standard, you would be deciding the concentration. You're going to, in a lab, make up a solution and decide the concentration that's actually being put on there. So let's say that you run your internal standard through and you get a peak here, and the peak has an area of, we'll say, 826.5, right? So there's the area for the internal standard. Now, when we made our internal standard, we calculated its concentration, ST representing standard here, we calculated its concentration to be 0 0.130 molarity. This would be whatever you are currently calculating in your lab, right? Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a molarity. I'm working with that because it's probably one of the most common, but certainly people go into millimoles. People can do grams per liter, milligrams per milliliter, whatever you want, right? So uh, then the next thing that you need to consider is X, right? And the goal here, what you need to realize is if there's some compound of interest and you're trying to identify it, you ideally want to get some pure compound. You want to run it through at a known concentration with the internal standard and see what you get for its area. Okay, so in this case, let's just say that this comes out to uh, 929.7. So that's the area for compound X and the concentration of X, let's say that we made up a solution and that solution, once we prepared it for the GC, had a molarity of 0 0.210 molar. All right, so how do we actually tie this in to the response factor? There is an equation that we can use in order to do this. And that is, if we know the area and the concentrations of both, we can do a general ratio to find the response factor itself. So what we'll do is we'll say that the area of compound X over the concentration of compound X is going to equal the response factor, which we will represent with a big F, okay? And that's going to be times the area of the standard over the concentration of the standard. So all that I need now is some simple, simple algebra in order to solve for F. So if I were to plug and chug here, what I would end up with is 929.7 over the 0 0.210 molarity. So that's the information for the known sample of X that I ran through equals the response factor. That's what I want to solve for. And then this value here would be 
0 0.130. So if you need a minute and you want to follow along here, you can plug this into your calculator and figure it out. You basically want to take this entire fraction, divide through and move it down here, and then consolidate and solve for F. Okay, or you can simplify this side and this side and then divide the two, whatever works for you. But if you correctly calculate this, okay, and let me put molarity, I don't want to forget my unit here, you should get a response factor that's going to be unitless. And in this case, the response factor here would be 0.696. And we're only going to take it out three significant figures because there were three significant figures that were present in the molarities here, right? So we're still taking measurements, we're subjected to significant figures. So this is the response factor for the detector for compound X. And that means that if I run, let's say some random sample that has some X in it, and I want to determine the concentration of X because it's unknown, I can do that once I have the response factor present there. And you would need a response factor for each of the individual components that you would like to look at okay when you're uh, working with this uh, setup here because it's a ratio relative to your internal standard right so let's say now that I move forward and I go ahead and run an actual sample that's got the unknown like we were just talking about right so there's some unknown amount of X and the question is the concentration of X in this case is equal to what right so this is the real world example uh, where you'd be maybe running this for a client or you have a lab where you have to determine the concentration of X in the solution based on this. Okay, so we run our sample. It goes along here. And let's say that as we're going along, we've got X and then it continues to go. And then we've got our internal standard, right? And we finish. So X, based on the known retention time, we find has a value of 250.2. And then we find that the standard has 511.9. Okay, so the question is knowing this, what is the concentration of X? Because we don't know what it is in this particular sample. So what I have to do is I have to run through the same thing. Well, I know that the area for X in the sample is 250.2 the question is what is the concentration right so that's what I need to solve here for and I now know the response factor is 0.696 and the standard I'm assuming that I used the same standard that was in the previous setup here okay, otherwise I would need to go back and reevaluate it I have 0 0.130 molarity and that's the area for the standard. So again, some algebra will go ahead and solve for this. You can do it however you would like, but you should see that you can now solve for X and isolate it by itself. And if we do that, the concentration of X here is 0 0.0912 molarity, three sig figs. So that is the power of having internal standards and setting up a response factor using your gas chromatograph with some sort of known sample. The magic behind that is that you can then track it as the detector may be shifting back and forth in terms of the response or the area that it's giving you. You have your response factor. You can build that in and you can account for it and you can then start determining the unknown uh, concentrations that are there okay so hopefully this was helpful this was again to address some of the uh, confusion around using a response factor and needing to account for that when you are trying to analyze GC because in this original setup that I had here again this was primarily for an introduction to general or organic chemistry course where you're not necessarily taking that into account some instructors may uh, but now there's some more clarity on that. Okay, and if you ever want to support the channel where it says get the guide in the sample lab report, if you go over to chemcomplete.com, we do have an entire report available for only $10. It basically summarizes everything I went over in this initial video, not the response factor video. And then it runs you through a mock lab report 
uh, for something of this nature. So if you're ever struggling, you can head over there. There's plenty of other things that you can check out in terms of the guides that we have. We have some for spectroscopy. If you're talking about trying to solve unknowns with IR, NMR, how to pass organic chemistry. Uh, if you're struggling with aromaticity, I have a practice guide, nucleophilic substitution versus elimination guide. So your support is always appreciated. Just viewing the content on YouTube is appreciation enough. So remember to subscribe for the latest content. Leave that like if you haven't, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.